sound, yeah, my name ring bells, yeah, my name ring bells, yeah, my name ring bells, what you do? Getting money, switching cars and chickens like it's nothing, blowing heads in the air, yeah, I'm always in the sun. You hear that damn sound, yeah, my name ring bells, yeah, my name <laughs> ring bells, yeah, my name ring it's bells, what you do? Getting money, switching cars and chickens like it's nothing, blowing yeah. heads in the air, yeah, I'm always in the sun. The next topic we're gonna to discuss on boxing bros is who should Tio Fio, to who should I can't say Tio Fimo today. Who should Tio Fimo Lopez fight next on October 2nd? I'm gonna turn it over to Trill Dollar Bill. You let us know who you think Tio Fimo Lopez should fight on October 2nd. Okay, here we go. Actually, you know what? I got a whole thing how I think ESPN should play, right? Oh, top rank, excuse me. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> uh, here it is, real, 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 real fast. Tefimo Lopez. Look, we know he got options, okay? He got options at 135, but we know you got bigger options if you move forward to 140, okay? Now, and be more money. So I think with how can you play it, right? I say let's let's go for Josh Taylor, right? Let's go straight for Josh Taylor, undisputed versus undisputed, right? But before that, let's make it interesting. Let's have some fun. Right. I think that Josh Taylor should be able to uh, go ahead and defend his crown and um, at least one time against Jose Zapita. He's also a top rank fighter and he is actually um, he was mandatory. He's actually mandatory for one of the belts that that uh, Josh Taylor got. But I was saying for Tefimo Lopez, for him to make a splash and to test himself out at 140. Why not beat up on Hooker? And if you can't get Hooker. Why not Ramirez? Because I think that those two guys right there, and they're on top rank also, so those fights would be easy to make, and it will see if you're ready for this 140, and then we can set up something later on with uh, Josh Taylor, and I think that those, that would be great, especially if we can put those 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 fights on the, on the same car, like the, uh, the 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 Taylor versus Zapita and uh, and uh, Lopez versus uh, either Hooker or Ramirez on the same card to set up the next one. Woo! I think that that would be big. That was my my Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I think that that would be awesome. That's what I would like to see. You know, I would like to see. But like I was saying, um, he has options if he want to stay at 135. But I would want to see him move up to 140 and challenge Josh Taylor for that um, for the undisputed up there. And but before that, set it up with a nice little fight to get acclimated at 140. All right, G. Y'all know who I'm gonna pick, man. Y'all know I'm gonna say Devin Haney. But however, I know they're not gonna do that, you know, because especially with this new signed deal and everything, they're not gonna run the risk of him losing all his belts to somebody that's not signed to ESPN uh, top rank. So I would say the Josh Taylor fight seems like a great. Uh, option for him for um, October 2nd, but I don't think that's going to happen either. Um, so, and I'm a little hesitant by saying this, but because Teofimo got this new contract and everything, I think it's only right the rematch with uh, Lomachenko. I think that would be a good pay per view. People want to see how Lomachenko would do in this rematch, especially seeing that, you know, Lom Lomachenko. It was a late start during that first fight. It was still close. It was competitive. And it's really down to that last round. So, you know, uh, that would be an excellent pay-per-view. Um, ESPN would definitely want that fight. So, um, and Lomachenko will want that fight, you know. So, I, I think it should be uh, Lomachenko for October 2nd. TBE. Uh, for October 2nd, I think. The winner of Loma Tako and Nakatashi, Nakatani, my bad, uh, would be uh, a perfect, perfect fight for that date. So whoever wins that matchup, I think Teofimo should take on. Uh, I know um, Loma didn't have a rematch clause, but it would just be only right just for to have a def definitive win against that man. Where it's like. If you get another decision, it's like you beat him twice by decision. And there's no, there's not. If you knock him out, which is eh, slightly not not possible, but I, you know, we don't know. I I can't rate a guy guy's chin that that's not mine. But you know, and who knows? We, is the fight still up between Nakatani? If Nakatani was, it was you didn't knock him out either. It was by decision. 
So that would be that would be um a, another great fight as well to see happen. So but what, either of those let's say Nakatani won, do you think Nakatani versus Teofimo Lopez will be a pay per view? Pay per view? Eh, not really, but it, it, I I. I I would say it, it could grow some, it, it could make money on pay per view, but it should be an ESPN fight. It should, it should, they should show it on ESPN. But that the, either, either the winner of that fight should be the opponent for him on October second. So that's it. So for me, Atio Fimo Lopez beats George Cambosis. I think he should consider two people. I think one is the obvious choice, Josh Taylor at 140. I feel like 140 and 135 is basically the same weight class. Like, I, I'm not, like, this is, like, you, to me, it's, it's whatever. I think you have the undisputed from 135, the current undefeated undisputed champion from 135, fight the current undefeated undisputed champion from 140, and I think that just that marketing ability alone is going to sell a lot. So I think that would be best case scenario. Um, I don't, Teofimo Lopez, it will probably benefit from not having to cut so much weight because um, he's already a big 135 pound fighter. So he would, he would probably benefit from just not having to cut so much weight and fighting at 140. And then, I think that's number one. But number two, I think, would be the rematch with Vasily Lomachenko. Because I think it's the one that's going to make the most money. I think if you throw him in there with uh, Nakatani, it's not going to make money. If you throw him in there with Devin Haney, it's not going to make money. Um, If he was looking for a fight to, say, make a little money and, you know, just to remove another fight from his contract, I think... You don't want Nakatani. Nakatani's one of uh, the toughest fights he's had in his career. Um, he's gotten past it. So what's the benefit of beating Nakatani again? See, the benefit of beating Vasily Lomachenko again is that you finally clear the air. Like, it wasn't a fluke that you beat him the first time. I don't see another reason for him to fight Nakatani. Um, if he wants to move up to 140 and take a fight to get acclimated, um, I'd say... Um, Maurice Hooker is, <laughs> is a good pick for that. I don't necessarily I don't, I don't think there's that much risk between the five pounds and going straight to Josh Taylor. I say it would be with gaining seven pounds and then taking on, say, someone at 147. Only because of the hydration. When you look at Teofimo Lopez, he makes 135, but his hydration, he's gonna get he gets a lot bigger. Um, I think when, when Josh Taylor's hydrated and Teofimo Lopez is hydrated, they're about the same weight anyway. So that's why I don't think that if he goes in immediately with Josh Taylor, um, it could be an issue. But that would be my recommendation. Um, but if he wanted, if any fighter wants to get acclimated out of weight before they go directly to the champion, then I can understand that as well. But I think as far as money-wise and public interest, I would say Josh Taylor won um, Vasily Lomachenko too. Please let us know how you feel in the comment section. Please check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And also check out our podcast on all major streaming services. We off the boxing bros. June 20th, Trail Talk, the mixtape. <laughs> You're welcome. You're all welcome.